welcome to the shutter. I've got some Bigfoot stories for you. One of our viewers, Miss Christy Fayard, requested Bigfoot stories, and I'm absolutely here to oblige. So kick back, and I hope you enjoy. Two summers ago, the wife and I were camped along the Little River State Beach, just north of McKinneyville, California. I'm 70, and I've been retired for five years now. We had been there with family and some friends, and had just finished surf fishing along about dusk. The four of us were sitting around a picnic table, relaxing and talking. Sarah brought to my attention a man strolling at a pretty good clip from the direction of the highway toward the ocean. I nudged my brother-in-law and said, Hey Everett, look at that freaking guy, naked as a jaybird. We all turned to look. The sky was huge, covered with hair, or in costume, don't know which, and was really moving about 30 feet away from us. We all agreed he must have been about 7 feet tall or better. Must have weighed better than 600 pounds, because me and Everett's combined weight is 500 plus, and this guy was much bigger than the two of us put together. The wife noted he was a candidate for the ugly contest, looking much like an ape, if you know what I mean. He was hell-bent on getting somewhere fast, and the only place in front of him was the Blue Pacific. Sure enough, we watched him charge out into the ocean and disappear into the darkening waters. We grabbed a high-beam flashlight and went to take a look. The tracks in the sand must have been two of my feet long and much wider, so as we know, we were not seeing things. If that don't beat all the experiences I had in life, I don't know what does. My son-in-law found your sight. We have read the Ancient Mysteries narration, and I think we saw a Bigfoot by chance. We were too stupid to be afraid at the time, but after seeing your sight, I don't think we'll be fishing in California anymore. We think the thing may have drowned himself. F.L. Monroe, Jackson, Mississippi. I was an assistant caretaker with the Sierra Club Foundation at Horse Camp on Mount Shasta during the early 1990s. During the summer months, the regular caretaker, R.W., and I used to take turns staying at Horse Camp during the weekdays so as to police the place and offer assistance to potential climbers on their way up to the summit. During these off days, we usually saw very few people at Horse Camp who would stay the night and climb the mountain the following morning. Normally, day hikers came up to visit and look around, but then went back down before sunset. It was a Thursday, and I was waiting for R.W. to come and relieve me so that I could go down to Shasta City and take a breather, get some food, and find a shower. R.W. was typically late, so I decided to retire once I realized he wasn't going to show up at all. I don't remember what stage the moon was, but a faint glow of light was present so that I didn't need to rely on my flashlight to get around. It was shortly before midnight and I was in my tent which I had set up less than 100 feet northeast of Horse Camp Hut. The area is a mix of stones and paths leading to other campsites and other trails to explore the mountain. After settling down for the night, I heard someone walk around the hut as stones clanked against one another. Knowing that R.W. was a big prankster, I yelled out his name, but got no response. I spent a lot of nights alone on Shasta, so I was rarely fearful of anything. When I got no response, I started to go off of pure instinct, and the chain of events became vivid. The walking sounds were getting closer to the left side of my tent, and thinking about how vulnerable I was, I grabbed my ice axe in my right hand and slipped out of my sleeping bag poised to open the mosquito flap if anything was going to go down. My heart raced and the adrenaline was pumping through me. Out of the left hand side of the mosquito mesh door, I saw a huge outline of what I believed to be a Bigfoot. The outline walked about 30 feet in front of my tent, stopped, turned, and stood facing me. At the time, I didn't think Bigfoot, but rather someone was up here to cause trouble. So I ripped open the door of the tent and jumped out with my ice axe in hand. I'm six foot three, and this being was much bigger than I. 
We stood there for a few seconds. Then the thing turned away and slowly walked into the trees. Needless to say, I didn't get much sleep that night. But just because of the spiritual and peaceful nature of Mount Shasta, I didn't question my safety, and life went on as usual, with my only regret being that I showed this entity such hostility by brandishing my ice axe. In hindsight, I believed the being was just passing through and meant no harm. I looked for footprints the following morning, but only found an area where it looked like something had a difficult time getting up a steep incline. I didn't smell anything, since a small breeze was coming from behind me as we stood there face to face. I finished out the caretaking season without further incident, except for a group of thieving boy scouts from Sacramento. My name is Charles, I have hunted all my life, and I'm a resident currently in West Virginia. The sighting I'm about to mention is something that frightens me to talk about to this day. What makes it worse is no one believes me except for my father. It all started when we were hunting in Jackson County. It was around noon and we were in tree stands approximately 25 to 30 feet off the ground. My dad on one side of the hill, me on the other. I was starting to get bored when something began rustling leaves. It was three deer followed by a large humanoid, or that is how I describe it anyway. It was large, probably around seven feet and hair covered, except for its face. It had a large sunk in nose and a reddish brown eye color with yellowish flat teeth. Stocky built and it smelled awful. You're probably wondering why I know all these details. Well, the fact of the matter was, I put my Golden Eagle scope up on it at a distance of around 100 yards, and frankly, was about to pull the trigger. Believe you me, I got a very good look. The thing that stopped me from shooting, though, was that the creature looked sad and non-aggressive. But that wasn't going to stop me. I was scared to death. It wasn't until I yelled out as loud as I could, if you're a human, stop right there and take off that mask or I'll shoot. The creature just looked at me and kind of growled. I was watching him through the scope the whole time, paralyzed with fear. The creature then turned and bolted, running extremely fast for its size, over the hill and straight for my dad. When I got down from the stand, my dad said he had seen flashes of the creature, but never the whole thing. I know what I saw was a Bigfoot. A family's young beagle had left the yard during the afternoon and began chasing a rabbit on the hillside behind the home. The dog had not returned at sunset and they thought it might be lost. About twilight, the mother drove up the hill using a road which followed a pipeline. She stopped the vehicle at a point below a wide ledge or bench which was about 200 yards below the crest of a ridge. She got out of the vehicle and started calling and whistling for the dog. After a few minutes, she heard something crashing through the brush as it ran off the ridge toward her. As she stood there, she saw a white or gray human-like form running out of the brush and onto the ledge above her. The creature stopped on the back side of the ledge so that she could only see the upper part of its body. It then moved along the ledge until it was concealed about 35 yards from her. At that time, the creature emitted a deep, powerful noise that became a loud scream. The sound terrified the lady and she turned to get in the vehicle. When she did, she saw the creature run back into the brush on the hillside. She listened as it crashed through the brush and she watched as it broke into the open just behind the crest of the ridge. The creature then stopped, looked at her, and repeated the sounds it had just made. At that time, she was shaking badly and could barely get back into the vehicle. And when she did, she had trouble starting and driving the vehicle off the hill. When she returned home, the beagle was standing on the porch, wagging his tail just like he always did. Needless to say, she didn't chase down the dog ever again.
There are at least two Bigfoot people that live in or near Chiquamagon National Forest in Wisconsin. We heard them the first time when we were mushroom hunting in 2001. We didn't see them that time, not until last year, 2006, when we stopped picking to eat a ham sandwich. We were sitting on the path, talking and eating. My husband was laid back on the ground with his knees up, eating his sandwich. After about 10 minutes, he said he heard something, like talk or chatter. We listened, and all I heard sounded like elk crashing through the underbrush. Maybe moose or a bear. Something big, anyway. But we were not alarmed. We had heard that noise before many times on the trail. My husband sat up to listen. The noise stopped. So he pitched some breadcrumbs out to a waiting bird, and the crashing crunch, crunch started again. He stood up fast and turned around and said, Look at this. I looked, and there was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. There was a large, hair-covered man, I think male, not sure, and a small one. The small one was much closer to us, about 20 feet away. The big one was another 10 feet back. They just stood there. I don't remember much else. We jumped up and started backing up, and as we did, the little one came a foot or two closer. It was walking up tall, like a bear. The little one looked like a kid, not a bear, but it had black hair, and it was male too. We backed up further and started a hurried exit down the trail. We never stopped until we reached the car. We don't think they would have heard us, but we didn't want to find out. My husband thinks they smelled our lunch, which we left behind. The little one was probably hungry and very courageous. There was no smell and no audible voice noise. The little one was about the size of a five-year-old human child. It was naked, kind of cute, dark-skinned with frizzy hair on its head like a bad perm that was shoulder-length on the sides. The face was clean of hair. I didn't notice a great deal about the bigger one. It was further away and it stood still. My husband doesn't know if the big one was male or female. We were surprised, as you might guess. The little one is the one that approached us, and I felt sorry for them. They were probably hungry. Wow, very cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed those, and thank you, Christy, for making the request. Let me know what you'd like to hear, and I'll do my best to get it on here. If you'd like your story told, you can send it to the email that's in the description. All right, thank you for listening. Hey, give us a like and a share if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you back here next time for The Shutter.